You may have noticed over the weekend in between um, babies being killed in Tikawiti um, that supposedly in Auckland, and I saw estimates from one bomber Bradbury online, 50,000 people marching in the, tre- in the streets. Apparently this massive, the post has got some lefty cartoonist this morning with the government as pins and the bowling ball of public opinion heading towards them on the fast track legislation. Um, It is the latest thing, and and there were a whole lot of Palestinian flags there, of course, as well, Um, and rent a mob, same people, different protest out there in in huge numbers, protesting the fast-track legislation. Well, I suspect because of the left-wing nature of our legacy media and Twitter and all the trolls, we're going to be hearing an awful lot about this, of how it's basically the end of New Zealand civilization as we know it. So I thought it would be useful this morning before the hyperbole and the hysteria go much further to just refresh our minds as to what the fast track legislation is, what it does, why we have it, and whether or not the government promised it. So we are joined by um, Minister Chris uh, Bishop and National MP for Heart South, who is part of supposedly the evil triumphant that is going to destroy the New Zealand environment, kill every endangered species we have, and generally create hell on earth. Uh, Minister, good morning. Thank you for... Uh, th- I'll put you on. Thank you for joining us this morning. Good day. It was quite an intro, Sean. Um, <laughs> Well, God, you would think the the sky was falling, uh, wouldn't you? Firstly, let's just remind people, if you could, what is the fast track plan, the fast track legislation that the coalition government is introducing? Okay, so there's two basic components. The, the first is um, the one stop shop nature of it. So when you apply for a, a major regionally significant project, um, often you've got to deal with the RMA, you've got to deal with the Conservation Act, you've got to deal with the Public Works Act, Heritage, Wildlife, all of these things. And they're all separate statutory processes. So the Fast Track Act combines them all into one application. So it's literally, you know, as it's on the, tin, on the name on the tin, a one-stop shop. So you deal with all the different permits you need for a project all at the same time. I think most people support that. The second thing is, um, is literally the Fast Track. So it speeds up the development. So uh, what we're uh, proposing is that um, the government uh, ministers, um, currently the three, the, the troika as you put it, or triumvirate, um, select uh, projects that they want to fast track, they want to be expedited, and they go off to a um, an expert panel of legal experts and environmental experts to apply the conditions upon which those projects will happen. Um, and then uh, the way the bill is currently working at the moment, those um, projects go back to ministers for um, final consent sign off. Back to the three ministers or, or separate ministers? Back to the, to the, the back three. Back to the three. And yeah, the three ministers the three. are as, you? As currently drafted. Yes, uh, it's the Minister for Infrastructure, uh, Transport and Regional Development. So uh, those portfolios are currently held by me, Simeon Brown, and Shane Jones. Shane Jones. Okay. All right. How does one get one's project before the three of you? Uh, you apply. So, well, there's two ways. The, the first is that Parliament could um, list you in the bill that's going through right now, and and we've had um, we're running a separate process around uh, putting projects in the bill, and we've had um, uh, some projects be applied to us for that. And then once the bill is into law, there'll be a, just a generic pathway, so people will be able to apply at any time and say, hey. I've got this, uh, you know, regionally significant project. It's going to create a lot of jobs. It's going to, um, you know, unlock this. And there'll be an official way to apply. It won't be, oh, any yeah. chance we can yeah. have lunch, Chris? I want to build no, a no, coal no, mine. No, 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 okay. no, no, not at all. I mean, they'll have to, they'll have to, you know, apply, apply to the officials, their statutory process, and then we have to take into account a range of different things before we even send it off to an expert uh, panel. So there's a there's a statutory decision making criteria in the bill. Okay. What sort of projects are we talking about here? Literally anything, almost anything? Well, the, the, the test is it has to be um, regionally or nationally significant. So, you know, if you're building a house next door to you or subdividing, um, a ha- you know, the, your section, well, that's clearly not, not going to be not so much. regionally significant. Um, yeah. You know, a 100 megawatt geothermal power station, um, you know, I would argue that's, that's both regionally and also arguably nationally significant. Um, you know, a road of national significance, um, which the government's campaigned on. 
I mean, the clues in the title, they're, they're projects of A national mine, a quarry? Well, potentially, yes. A they wind farm? Be, be eligible. A solar yeah, a farm? farm potentially eligible. Yes, solar farms. A we, salmon talk, farm? We've, yes, we've talked, we've talked sort of generically about... Yeah. Um, I mean, I, the way I put it like this is, 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 Sean, is we've got an infrastructure deficit, we've got a housing crisis, and we've got ambitious emissions reduction goals. There's not a person in the country who's looked at this stuff properly who thinks that our current planning system is able to address those crises. In fact, our planning system makes those crises worse. Um, so, you know, we, we've got to cut through the red and green tape to make it easier to get stuff done in this country. Mm. Will you still have regard to the environment? In making Absolutely. these decisions. And that's, I guess, that's the painted, picture that's being painted is this is all going to be brown paper bags full of cash and, I don't know, cigar smoke-filled rooms and stuff like this. Just because you're yeah, speeding well, something up doesn't mean that you can't do it ethically, does it? Well, there's, there's, there's quite a bit of, um, frankly, uh, misinformation going on around it. I mean, um, f- firstly, uh, the concept of a Fast Track Act is not a new one. So the Labor Party had two versions of Fast Track, um, and they, they campaigned proudly on the fact that they'd um, introduced a Fast Track regime. And the way the Fast Track regime introduced by Labor during COVID, and then um, later they legislated it during... Oh, they did too. They just said, we'll, yeah. we'll do stuff. Yeah, well, they picked... People, people go on about how me and Shane Jones and Simeon are picking the projects. Well, in Labor's Fast Track, Cabinet authorised David Parker to pick the projects. So David Parker, without any... Um, expert you know, panel? We were at least running a... You know, no, they had an expert panel, but, but you know, we... we the, 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 the Cabinet authorised David Parker without any kind of, um, you know, particularly uh, transparent process um, to, to pick the projects. He had to pick 17 of them. They went off to the expert panel for final consenting. And by the way, most of them have been consented at, without any controversy whatsoever, using the exactly the same... Uh, process. Ministers pick the projects, they go off to an expert panel, the expert panel puts the conditions on them, and um, and then you go forward from there. How come um, Russell so Norman didn't really lose his lunch, lunch over that then, Chris? I did, I did enjoy Russell Norman um, literally reading a speech from an iPhone condemning mining. Um, I feel like someone needs to tell him how many how many uh, you know different things that have been mined go into the production of an iPhone. <laughs> I did find it quite delicious. Yeah. It looks for all the world, though, uh, Chris, doesn't it? Another week, another reason for the same people to get out and march about something else. I mean, the budget, it was one thing, um, and now it's the fast-track legislation, and then it'll be gay whales' rights or something. There is now just, a, or Palestine, there's just this perennial weekend protest thing going on with all the same people doing it, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think there's, there's there's some some truth to that. I mean, there's a, there's clearly a professional protest class, and and um, you know they've managed to conflate um, you know a whole bunch of different issues which are completely unrelated to each other into a sort of generic you know we don't like the government mentality. Um, it's all fine. It's free speech. They're entitled from that point of view. I, I think there are people legitimately concerned about the environment as well. I mean, you know, there's quite a lot of people there on the weekend.